And every now and then you just want to go, Mommy, take it away. <laughs> Bill's done that all his life. Look. <laughs> That's how I lost all my hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to dive a little bit deeper before we change a little bit because you all talked about how important it is to be on site and to do those punch lists and to walk through the project that's either close to being done or done. When you're on those sites, because I've been on a couple of them myself, not being a consultant, and I realized how important it is with the relationships you've got, not with each other, but with the rep groups, with the service agents, with the manufacturers, with the dealerships. How what is your relationship like and how do you view each one of those segments when it comes time to not only designing what you're doing on a piece of paper, but then you know when you get there, you're, you're always gonna have problems. I, I don't think there's any project you get to that doesn't. So what do those relationships mean to you when you get to there and you know that you've gotta fix something? It's, it's huge. It's, it's still a relationship business. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Now the bean counters and the manufacturers think different. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's, I recently, we had a problem where we spec, a correctional, we specified the wrong racks. They're supposed to be roll-in racks and not just regular, mm -hmm. you know, height. I was able to call the manufacturer and go, we screwed up. I need to ship these back and get some more and I need to help pay for it. And he said, you never ask for anything. You know, we, you do yeah. stuff for us, let us help you out. And I said, it's our screw up. Yeah. We yeah. need to do it. And he's, yeah. you know, yeah. but we were able to work it out. You know, I paid for eight or something, but yeah. it could have been a lot more. Yeah. But uh, by being able to know who the manufacturer was or who's there, the president or the, or the sales manager, yeah to pick up that phone and call them is, is invaluable. Well, you know, the other thing that, the thing I found, and we've all been there on this situation too, with the complexities of some of these projects, especially Dick, you talked about Dolphin Stadium. Mm -hmm. I as well worked on a couple of renovations there as well as others. Mm -hmm. And some of these huge stadiums and arenas and big convention centers, the complexity of some of these systems, I'm talking about fluidics, I'm talking about the types of refrigeration. I mean, you're talking about huge systems. And they're, I noticed over the years, not so much in the early days, but recently, um, and I, don't, I, I have my own ideas why, but more and more, even the engineers on our project, when we deal with these very complex systems, they're basically saying, we don't know what you're talking about. Educate us and design it. So we need the factories, we need the reps more than ever to give us some assistance because we just don't know everything about everything. Well, I, I, will, I will say, and I know we were talking about this earlier about the tools that we use to do this work now. Um, because of, for us, like this, the Revit that we use now, which I think is a really cool tool. I mean, class detection, all that kind of stuff is really cool. But I, I think, and this will get to the part about uh, relationships. Um, we now run conduits and everything else where these things are going to come up and it's just our job has gotten more complex, right? So that coordination and I don't, I don't know if it's the lack of uh, knowledge, um, but there are, I'm with you, there are engineers, architects that we're educating, which mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to me. You know, we, we get into these things, we're using the tool that they use. And how am I using my architectural and engineering background from like four decades ago yeah. saying, I know you can't do that. How, how are you doing? Educate me if, if there's something new, but that can be done. You know, we're getting into the field with these things. Our drawings are more accurate. We do these punches. We're seeing the core drills in the concrete before anything gets there. I mean, I, I did this with you, right? When we, were, when we were working on that project. We're going in, Bill knows what he put there, and we're in, I'm checking it in the field, and I'm like, uh, I'm calling Bill, I'm like, uh, Bill, this, this thing isn't where you are thinking it is. Yeah. You know, and he's like, 
we got to figure this out. And we're and luckily, relationships. Right? But the luckily, A, look, but how are the AE teams are expecting more and more from, from us? From us. Yeah. yeah. I they're, think, I they're think all of at, us would agree. Yeah, they're looking at our drawings for more and more information because they have people that aren't doing it. You know, and we're taking more responsibility for everything that's connected to our equipment. So um, to go into the field, like you said, to go into a field and have the relationships with everybody in the industry that gets it from the paper to, to turnkey and the client's taking it, where I could call a manufacturer and say, whether I screwed it up or they screwed it up, it's like, yo, we have a problem. Yeah. You know, because we have these re long relationships, we can get that fixed. But the, but the issue I'm finding, and I agree with you with the manufacturers and stuff, the relationships that we built mm -hmm. were, it was pick up, a phone, pick up the phone, the they were right there. Mm -hmm. You know, they were right there to please you. And when we had our reps and lost our reps and back and forth and we lose our connections to the manufacturers, those relationships are either severed mm -hmm. or now we're having to build brand new ones. Yeah to get that fixed and we lose 30 years worth of connection with There's these another people. Piece. Oh, go ahead. Oh. I was just going to uh, go back on something you said, Howard. I never will forget we were doing a, a, a large stadium in, well, it was the Georgia Dome, which has now been imploded. <laughs> Shows you how old I am, you know. But, but anyway, I remember we were uh, uh, just starting a project. And the architect kind of was, you know, had his nose up in mm -hmm. the air a little bit and, and said, uh, you know, well, you, you do realize that this, you know, the food service is only 2 to 3% of the project. So it's not mm -hmm. that important. So I said, to her, do I really put him in his place or not? And I said, you know, Scott, I says, it may be 2 or 3% of the total project but it's second in revenue behind <laughs> ticket sales. <laughs> it's painful. And, and, uh, and he, yeah. he said, you know, Dick, I've never thought of it that way. And so that led to yeah. probably 20 years of projects mm -hmm. out of that guy, but standing up to him and talking to him, you know, and mm -hmm. just kind of put him in. The other thing I was going to talk about, the, the dealer uh, exp uh, uh, network, uh, you got to have the dealers on your side, you know, and, and yeah. have a good relationship with them. I, I, we had a, one of those mistakes. One of our mm -hmm. project managers had put the, the dish, uh, the flight type dish machine in backwards. That sounds familiar, and Bill. It was. <laughs> I can't that believe how he, how he he did this, and I won't go into the details. But but anyway, it was going to be a twenty five thousand dollar fix for for the company. Oh, and I said, oh, you know, what are we going to do? So I called, uh, you know, the dealer and I, I'll say it was Johnson Lancaster and I, uh, Jerry Lancaster. I know we'll forget this. And he said, uh, you know, I said, Jerry, I says, you know, we got, got to pay $25,000 on this. And so uh, I says, you're paying it? And I says, yeah. You know, and he says, he said, Dick, don't worry about it. I never will have a consultant look bad. I never will forget that. Wow. And he took care of the whole thing for Great us. Story. Wow. And uh, so that kind of taught me that you got to work with the, the dealers. Okay. You know, they do a lot of good things. You know, the other side was, you know, I've also worked on the dealer side. Yeah. So I understand some of the dark side of that. Yeah. Uh, so, but it really made me a better consultant understanding yeah. that. Yeah. You know, there's another piece to this relationship with um, reps, manufacturers, distributors, and I think one of the biggest Achilles heels in our industry is who trains the people in the field how to use the equipment. Mm -hmm. You all work so hard, you know, to spec the right things for the right reasons, and it gets installed, hopefully, properly, not always. And then who trains the, the people on the ground to use the equipment? And I have had such good fortune calling a rep, calling a distributor and saying, look, the, the, I, I, I can do some of it. I will do some of it as an MAS consultant. But 
you really need to come out and do this training. And that's the big miss. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to ask. It's still a big miss. It is. It's a yeah. huge miss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so equipment doesn't get used optimally. It doesn't get used properly. It gets abused. That's why, that's why many of the chefs will not allow certain types of equipment to be specified have you all and that, that's a great example because mm -hmm. there's reasons that they if they don't look good in the field the chefs and know how to work this equipment they don't want it specified right. no it's intimidating no, exactly. it's intimidating to it's them it's intimidating yeah. and it's um, you know and i so i always ask well and i've found out recently so i'm going to ask all of you do you, do you now need to add to your specs that there will be a training element because I have been, and, and that's. Yeah. yeah, and that, not only that, but manufacturers yeah. are putting it in as an option, yeah. as, as okay. an option, especially like the rationales, those people are putting it in. It's in, in our option. standard conditions. It's yeah. been yeah. for oh. 10 years oh. uh, we've had that. Yeah. But you know what? What the, happens? What the big problem, though, in my opinion, is that, you know, <laughs> you train the guy when you're. They're at the opening. Well, we all know He's gone the opening three opening yeah. chef is not uh, the one that's stuck, you know. Yeah. And then the manufacturers will not allow you to videotape the taping because uh -huh. they know that if there's something liability-wise that's not said just right, yeah. Yeah. Good point. you yeah. can't. They uh -huh. won't do it. So what are, okay. you got to go back to uh, the YouTube on how to clean the rationale yeah. oven or whatever yeah. it is. Who's going to do that? that? No. So it's a yeah. huge problem. And it is. In Alabama, uh, our project manager, Louise Howard, who was over there for years in the schools, if that's mainly what she did was just mm -hmm. schools, and she put in there for a certified chef to come in and spend a day when they started cooking, not just the demonstration right. before, right. which could be weeks or months before they are actually start operating, but to have a certified chef come in mm -hmm. and teach them. Again, you know, with combi oven, it'll, it'll hug you in the morning if you come, you know, if you got it <laughs> programmed right. <laughs> so, yeah. Howard touched on it a little bit earlier. How is technology, you talked a little bit about that. I know you're talking about it before we started filming. How is, when you all started, you all mentioned drawings, and I know that for a lot of you, it was actually a drawing by hand. So how has it changed for you? Like, tell me the briefly. History. Yeah, tell me a briefly what it was like when you started drawing versus what it's like to do a drawing it, now. It is, it's night and day. I mean, I, I laugh and joke. I, I think I wrote an article probably 30 something years ago, and it was kind of a tongue in cheek, but, I was saying, you know, when I, when I got into drafting, and it was the truth, when I got into drafting, uh, my instructor taught us how to build triangles, how to build square triangles. And uh, he said, really? I'm like, no, I'm serious. It, it, you know, we had to understand the tools and how they worked and, and how to square things up and all these kind of things. But I mean, we, it's funny. I, I think we, we all started on paper with a pencil. We went from paper to mylar, mylar to plotter, plotter to inkjet plotters. I mean, we went from from sitting in the back room with blueprint paper and ammonia that would burn your eyes out and your and your lungs. And that was like my first job at Ramal Gatlin was making prints, and I had to inhale that crap for you know. Um, that explains but, a lot, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been snorting ever since, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that's that's the truth. <laughs> I still have a bottle. Howard knows that room. ammonia smell. <laughs> <laughs> and we all we all had the really long conference tables, so you could walk oh up my shop God, drawings. We were doing hand, uh, yeah, we had we had shop drawings that looked like you bled on them. It was great. But I, I think the cool thing now, and I, I mean, I love the technology that we have now. I really do. And we were just talking about this before we started this. Um, I love the technology and how it can be utilized, the things that it does. Um, that where we fall short in some spaces is that if our knowledge of this stuff isn't put into that tool, yes. then it gets lost. 
And that was kind of my, my first fear when AutoCAD came along and, and KCL was doing these great things about making the blocks. Everybody, I said, it's going to get to a point where people just dropping into a plan Plug and, and, play. They, and they're figuring they they're don't done. Think about it. And it's gotten, it's gone farther and farther with that, with more and more information, you know? So, um, I, I think people need to continue to tap on not just the knowledge around the table, but people like us to make sure that that stuff is in the program. If you plan on just dropping it and understanding it, you know, um, I love the 3D, I love the modeling and all this stuff. And I mean, we can turn buildings sideways. We're running conduits for refrigeration and water and gas and clean, um, cleaning systems, all this stuff in our, in our drawings to make sure they can get through the drawing before every other contractor puts their crap in it for us. How, how, Howard, here's the point, and I, I look at it like you do, but I'm, I never really came up as a designer. Anybody who knows me knows that Bill can't draw a straight line and never could. <laughs> well, you do but, a lot better with a scotch, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, or ammonia. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but from a business standpoint, now let's talk about the business standpoint of technology. Again, I'm going to offer this to all of you. The fact of the matter, I've seen over the years, again, the clients taking advantage of this technology and saying, I want you guys to do more and more work. I want you to do the layering. I want you to double check the, you know, the interior designer's drawings. I want you. Now, have our fees changed that much to allow us who's getting off with doing less work and who's getting off with doing more work, I ask yeah. all of you. Well, You've well, all been in this position. Well, well and, and the thing, uh, you know, and we've seen it through our entire career, the amount of time that it took to do it by hand yeah. compared to the amount of time that it takes to do it now, right? right? Now, they, people, clients, architects, everybody else on the team expects, they said, we know this tool, it can move real fast. So you should be able to do it in a short amount of time. So, and our fight back is, I, I mean, we, we say it in the office all the time when we talk about these things. Back in the day, the majority of the work was done on the back end, right? From, from initial design to complete. So this was the smallest amount of time it took. This was the amount of time it took to finish it. Now, all that work is on the front end, mm -hmm. right? Because we want all the information up front so the engineers get this stuff ahead of time, and by the time you're putting this stuff in, it has all the information. Oh, but, it, but ch things change on yeah. the fly. Yeah, right. And then you gotta go but, back and change things three and four but, times. But even, even technology, which I really like about the tool, is that if you change this, it changes it through the entire drawing, mm -hmm. as opposed to where we change every sheet, every sheet. Mm -hmm. right? So it, it has its really good points. Mm -hmm. But I, I, and I, I'm with you, it's like, now that we can see everything, we're doing class, the ten, uh, uh, clash detection and, and all these things, great. But now we're like, uh, your tables are in our space. Well, we redesigned it, so can you redesign the kitchen? Oh, we had to put in this chase, and now we're like, okay, it's great that we see the chase halfway in the plan, but now I have to redesign the entire space. But it's easy to do, so just do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, no. oh, go ahead. <laughs> you, know, not, no, you got to Florida this time. <laughs> No, well, it's interesting, you know, listening to this, and again, as an MAS person, I, I don't deal with all of that, but I have... But your front of the house technology has changed the significantly. The technology, let me just tell you. And that, we don't know. Yeah. We don't, we don't know that your MAS front of the house technology, and that's a problem sometimes. So, so thank you, and, and, so, and MAS has typically, historically, not known either. So there's, and this huge need has arisen. There has not been a client I've worked with for at least six years. That's one of the first things is what technology should we use? Which POS vendor should we use? What does POS really mean today? Yeah. It's not a piece of equipment where it is, it's It's the not whole a cash world. register. No. So not <laughs> only does that, is that a huge piece that I've had to educate myself about? But then the, it impacts design. Where's the connectivity? Are people thinking in advance of design if they want technology? 
how does that impact queuing? Mm -hmm. And where do you put screens? And what kind of screens? And do you put KDS screens in the kitchen? It's unbelievable how it has impacted flow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you've got the younger... And hospitality. The younger hospitality managers that have smart homes now, well, on their app, they can turn on their lights, their alarms, or everything else. They can monitor their temperatures. Yeah. And so now they want that in a restaurant down the road. And, it's, and we hear it coming. We see it coming. So they're going to want to get to that point of that we talked about earlier, the connectivity part, yes. you know, where you can monitor your refrigeration units. You can monitor your kitchen, how much energy the electricity is going out. Right. And it's out there, but they just don't talk very well yet. But that's another part mm -hmm. that... It has to become part of the drawings. It has to become part of the POS. It has to, it's all one big brain it system. It has to be integrated. And this, you know, there's still, and you know, Dick has, uh, you know, in boot camp together, you yeah. know how passionate I am about visioning yeah. in, up front. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use technology? Do you yeah. want kiosks? Do you want apps? Mm. Do you want KDS screens? Because it is, it's madness to, to take a, an existing facility and, and now plop in all, those stuff. all that stuff <laughs> after the after fact. The fact. <laughs> well, it, it never fits then. It, it never so, fits there's, there's there where the queuing gets all screwed up. Yeah. Well, and, and, that, and, that adds, and that adds to, and I'm sorry, Dick, uh, that adds to our drawings as well. So, I mean, our drawing sets used to be like 10, 12 sheets. I mean, Good God, man. I, I mean, I got a pro. We I'm a hearing project. everything is adding to our yeah. sets of drawings. Is our fees uh, <laughs> going up Charged accordingly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, Dick? Well, I was just get, getting back to the, you know, my definition of technology or how technology has changed. And I, I, one of you guys talked about the business of technology. Okay. So I'll take it back to when uh, John Cini first had this vision to, to uh, have a CAD system. And so the, the CAD systems back then were $250,000 a station. Ooh. We had two stations at the time. And then we had to create all of our library. God, do you remember that? And, and he had a whole room of just a computer. Remember that big yeah. computer you guys yeah, had? Yeah, no, it, 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 was, it looked like this fireplace yeah. here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah. but, you know, but we did it because you know, we, we wanted to have a consistent product because you know, we had at the, at the time seven offices and we wanted a product that looked the same that was coming out of Chicago, looked the same as was coming out of Miami. Yeah. So that was the business of bringing that in. And so he had the forethought to you know, put in a CAD system. I don't even know what a system costs dude, now. Dude, but I, you could probably I, get a whole system for 10,000 bucks, you know? I, I, yeah. you and that computer to that size is now the size of your phone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, and, and along that story, same thing with Ramal Gatlin, and uh, we teamed with uh, Mulhouse McCleary, Dick McCleary. And Sour Mono came in one day. We were just happy drawing on our boards. Sour Mono comes in and said, we're going to CAD. And we all look at each other like, what the heck is CAD, yep. right? He, he, if you step on it, can you get it off your <laughs> shoes? His, his, yeah, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was something I stepped in. And, and, so, and it was, come to find out. But um, he brings his, his nephew in, who happened to be into computers, no food service, just computers. And Sour Mono came in and said, we're going to do this, period. And we said, okay. He's like, I said, so do we get like a break from the work so we can figure this out? He's like, no, figure it out while you're working. And we're, we're creating layering. We're creating the names of it. We're, luckily, uh, uh, his nephew was just freaking amazing. But we were taking all the details that we, I had to take all the details I drew by hand that are standard details and put them into the computer. And so we were doing all this stuff before um, uh, Mr. Kochman decided to start making families, right. you know. Yeah, but but we were, family. yeah, I mean, it was like you either get this done or you lose your job kind of thing. And we had it up and running in a month. And luckily, Dick McCleary was doing the same thing. So we were fighting back and forth, figuring out what worked, you know. And, and then you're like, wow, this is really cool, you know. <clears throat> But, but, but one thing I wanted to go back to a little bit of what you were talking about earlier and Karen also, 
and yes, I started in the pencil and doing mm -hmm. all that and, you know, learning the CAD and we were learning things or new things about CAD and or Revit that even the architects and our clients exactly. don't know. Yeah, we're teaching did, the engineers, did. but yeah. Yeah. but going back to and something my father said and I still try and teach our people is you know, I can I can put everything in that kitchen, all this equipment and it looks great, but is it functional? Yeah. For and you know, my father always said, walk the chicken through the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> yes. You take that piece of chicken that comes in the back door, goes to the cooler freezer, comes out to prep, then the cooking and serving, and comes back dishwashing and you know, going back mm -hmm. out. He said, you've got to watch the flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. journey of yeah. the potato. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, it, my, that is so smart to do that. My line is always, tell me about this. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I, anybody ever heard me say that, I said, oh no, what, uh -oh. something's not right, well, you know, tell, tell me about it. Yes. I like that, I'm going to use that. Yeah. Let me know what you were thinking, yeah, that, that's what I tell the guys in my office, like, so, so what were you thinking, and, and it's like, uh, and sometimes it's, what the hell, <laughs> that's my next line, I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I, okay, so, so this is, fascinates me because I worked on a big project um, where the, uh, the big non-commercial project, and they had had uh, several m huge kitchens designed previously, then chosen the operator, and the operator uh, came in left -hand, right -hand and chef. said, <laughs> What's who? What's yeah. this? Isn't how we cook. I can't live with this. So they were oh, doing yeah. like quarter, half a million dollar renovations to brand new kitchens every time the operator would come in, yeah. and they finally figured out. Let's let's turn this around. We are going to take charge and bring in a food consultant team to design the concepts to work with the designer to So design that any operator that cannot, can work it. Yeah. That's exactly, and guess what? When the RFPs went out, this is it. There are no changes, take it or leave it. Yeah. Don't sign up if Karen, you don't. Karen, in fact, we inserted something later on in our practice that basically said, you guys will love this. <laughs> Mr. Operator, you can change anything you want, anything, however, you're going to pay every last nickel mm -hmm. of the renovation change cost. That means MEP, architectural, equipment, yeah, etc. You'd be surprised true. how few Take changes quiet. would come. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know, in, our, in our practice, too, doing a lot of country clubs mm. or you know, city clubs and different things, and you're working with this chef and working with them, it goes out for bid. Next day, he's gone. They get a new guy in. By the time it's built and open, there's a third chef. Yeah. And, you know, and it's avoidable, but yeah. it's, you know, I'm, I'm seeing more and more people stepping up earlier on to create their own vision, their own programming, and then when the RFP goes out, I mean, this can be prevented, yeah, can. but organizations have to catch on to this, that they can take control of their own destiny. Dick alluded to it earlier, and I want to end this uh, conversation, which has been great so far. Again, appreciate all of you for joining us. Um, if you were, when it comes to training in new people and, and for the next generation it's gonna be through, if you were to hire a new consultant today and today's their first day, what advice do you give them about the career in this industry? You have to have the passion in this, in this industry. If they're just coming in as a job, they're not gonna make it. So what I say, get ready to work hard, you know, and like you were saying, Karen, you know, be, be humble, learn as much as you can. You're going to work uh, a lot of hours, you know, but, you know, it's going to be very rewarding. So just learn as much as you can. Just absorb as much as you can. And uh, don't just hear, listen. Listen to what people are really saying. Dig deeper than than what might be on the surface of what people are saying. Probe, ask, you know, coax truth uh, out, out, of, out of people. And also remember that 
we're not in this business to make ourselves famous. Yep. We're in business to make the client successful. Make the client look good. Yep, exactly. Howard, what about you? Um, I think for me, I, I think anybody, I, I mean, we, we know you, this isn't a profession that you go to school for and get a degree in. This is on the job training. Um, you have to keep your ears open, your eyes open. You want to learn um, because the only way you learn this business, sadly, is being around people like us. Yeah. You know, um, and respect the history that you have around you. I think that's it. James? Yeah. <clears throat> I tell people my, my job is to teach them one thing a day, especially the new folks. At least one thing a day, and if I can do that, in five to 10 years, you have got a great career, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and to bring, you know, we we have senior members who have been around longer than I have. And I said, talk to them, find out, mm -hmm. learn from them. Yeah. You know, um, and, and like I said, you ask questions. Don't be afraid to try or think about something new. You know, what is it? The old saying of this. Uh, there's no stupid questions, just stupid people asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know, uh, that, that mantra, uh, which I, I, I've always had, is, is learn something new every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every day. Bill, what about you? Well, I agree with well, what all of you have said here. I, I think I'd like to add one other piece, and that is think big, don't think small. Mm -hmm. As you learn, expand, be a self-starter, because there's... Yeah. There's unbelievable opportunity in this business if you think on the big picture. I learned that years ago from Jim Little. Mm -hmm. Jim, I used to say Jim was a real maverick. His father, Keith, mm -hmm. uh, started, was the first consultant in Canada, and I learned from Keith. But between, I had great mentors with Keith Little, first consultant in Canada, Richard Flambert, well known in San Francisco, the first MAS consultant that, you know, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, Fred Schmid, mm -hmm. all three of whom were, are, are iconic. And I learned from all of those guys, and they all said one thing, if you're gonna get in this, do it for the long term, listen, learn, be professional, but most of all, think big and go for it. Well, thank you all again. Uh, that wraps up this edition of Party of Five. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode when we'll feature five new consultants. But until then, cheers. 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 cheers.